talking about this amazing 1910s wrap cape. This pattern was brought to us by the amazing American Duchess team. They posted it for free to download from their Patreon a few months ago. You've probably seen a few costumers out there who have also completed the same pattern. I'll make sure to link those other channels down below so you can check out how they did it. Today we're going to go through the process of making this and how I put it together. So I hope that you enjoy this video. Let's get started. All right, first things first, we need to scale this printed pattern up to a size a human can actually wear. Luckily, we have this square here marking the scale, and I happen to have some wrapping paper with a one inch grid. We're going to unroll and weight down the paper, then begin our counting. Once the measurements are known, it's time to transfer the pattern to the wrapping paper. You get to see both of my helpers here. Once the pattern is transferred and then cut out, it's time to lay it out on the fabric. I'm going to be starting with the lining here. Please excuse the shaking. I was trying out a new tabletop camera stand and as it turns out, my table is shaky and thus camera shaky. I will work on this for next time. After drawing the pattern on the fabric, adding the seam allowance, it was time to trace all of the markings and start cutting. And cutting. And cutting. And look, there's Spice. Hi Spice. To draw out the dart lines, I used a hole punch in the pattern to allow me to mark three points on each line, and then I used a ruler to draw the lines in place. Having the dart lines drawn out, it was time to pin them up. My absolute favorite part of this project is the way the front pieces look when darted. They create this really pretty fan, and I just am obsessed with it. I'm sewing up the darts here. I sewed the lining together first and then I did the outside fabric. Pro tip, when sewing in a dart, you want to make sure that you're running towards the top of the dart and then once you've done that, you're going to run off the edge of the fabric as opposed to back stitching. Then you're going to tie the thread in a knot and that is going to do two things. It's going to reduce bulk at the end of the dart and it's also going to make it press out nicely. Here I am pressing out those darts. and then trimming off the seam allowance. All right, it's time to sew on the sleeves. There was talk that the pattern sleeves and back didn't match up by about two inches. I actually ended up putting my pieces on my dress form and discovered that by putting the sleeves on backwards, they match the length in the back perfectly. And for me, they seem to lay better on the apex of the sleeve. That's just a note. Once I had the lining sewn, I moved on to the black outer fabric, repeating all of my processes, pinning in the darts, and then sewing them up, tying them off, pressing, trimming down the seam allowances, attaching the shoulders, and finally pinning in the sleeves. sewing the sleeves on and for some reason during this in this point I also sewed up and attached the collar uh, but for some reason I have absolutely zero footage of that step strange once both pieces were sewn up it was time to put them together I once again hung the pieces on my dress form and pinned and then trimmed away anything that wasn't quite right or didn't quite match up 
I also evened out the hem. I did let the fabric hang for about 24 hours because the sleeves are cut on the bias and they needed to stretch just a bit. At this point, I also added two 15 inch pieces of satin ribbon to the ends of the front wraps to make the ties that go behind the back. I do like the adjustability of this method as opposed to the hooks and bars or hooks and eyes that are asked for in the pattern. And that's just a personal preference. I am a bit larger. So for me, having the ties be adjustable made more sense. And again, I apologize. My camera doesn't seem to really like this red and white stripe. And I have noticed some strange places where it's not quite focused or just a little off. So with the right sides of the pieces together, I sewed all the way around, leaving about eight inches along the bottom to turn it through. This actually ended up being quite a process. I trimmed down the seam allowance with pinking shears and clipped all my corners and curves. I then turn the cape right side out. And after a good pressing and pinning along the edge, I top stitch the entire cape. I love the crispness that top stitching gives a piece. It also made this piece reversible, which you will see in the final footage. With everything top stitched, this 1910s wrap cape is complete. And I am just completely in love with this cape. It absolutely delights my dark circus, bubbly goth, ringmaster fantasies, and I can't wait to wear it this fall and early winter. so much for watching this video hopefully by the time you're watching this this channel will be at 300 subscribers which is just a very very exciting thing for me still very surprising to me on a daily basis that anybody wants to watch me so that being said once we get around 500 I would like to do some kind of giveaway or something fun something to show you guys how much I appreciate you coming by every week or every couple of weeks and checking out what I've got to show you. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Stay tuned. I'm sure I'm going to be talking about it a little bit more in the near future. If you haven't already, Costube Guide at Costube Guide on Instagram. It's like TV Guide for Costube. If you want to know what's coming up in the Costube community, you can check out that Instagram channel on a daily basis and it is going to make sure that you know what us costumers are up to. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I can't draw a straight line today. I'm working on stripes, you would think. <laughs>